one. Hello, I am Decimus Claudius, and I welcome you today to the first live quiz show as part of the Ludi Novi Romani uh, during the 26th anniversary celebrations, which mm -hmm. are hosted by myself and my fellow uh, Kural Adal Kekilios Metellos Tokayensis. Hopefully I pronounced his name correctly. <laughs> and, and today we have three esteemed Nova Roman participants. First of all, we have Gnaeus Cornelius Lentulus. Hello, salvete. I'm, I came from Provincia Pannonia, that is uh, modern day Hungary. And I'm currently Triumvir Monetalis, that is the manier, the coin maker officer of Nova Roma. And besides that, I hold uh, various administrative functions uh, in Nova Roma, uh, uh, I'm a senator, as my wide stripe shows, and I'm ready to play. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Next up, we have um, Decimus Aurelius Ingeniarius. Uh, Salute omnes. Uh, I hail from Provincia, Australia, on the far reaches of our uh, Respublica. Uh, I happen to be one of the uh, Decimir Stelitibus Judicandis, so one of the judicial uh, magistrates uh, for this year. Uh, very happy to be here. Um, I'm looking forward to an exciting evening and learning lots. Definitely. And, and lastly, we have um, M. Tullius Insulanus. What does your M stand for? It, that would be Marcus Tullius Insulanus. And I hail Marcus. from, well, none of the provinces since I hail from Estonia. Uh, relatively new among the Quirites, a new citizen. Um, however, I have practiced uh, Religio Romana for a while, as well as studying Latin on my own. Great. Hopefully both of those uh, items will do you well in uh, the quiz show. Now, I'm super excited. There hasn't been a quiz show in this format before in um, Nova Roma. And I've actually been planning and thinking about this for two years. So this is really a culmination of a lot of effort to uh, get this done. And I had so much fun coming up with the questions. Now, uh, there are 36 questions among six different topics. And none of the participants knew what the topics were until right now. So let me just read them <laughs> off for you. The first one is geography. The second one is Cicero. Cicero. The third one is structures in Rome. <laughs> the fourth is Roman deities. The fifth one is military. And the very last one is important events. Okay. Now, uh, I hope all, all of you, um, you know, will do fine. I'm sure you will. The only thing is, <laughs> is that I wanted to structure the questions a bit from easy to hard. But the easy questions aren't super easy. But still, um, I, I thought it would be a lot of fun. Now, obviously, many times, personally, if I would get the questions, I wouldn't know the answer or I would have to guess maybe, you know, 50-50. But that's kind of the fun. And... Um, Without further ado, let's start off with the very first question uh, in the subject of geography. So we're going to do all six questions in geography before we go in, before we go to the next topic. Are there any questions before I begin? Okay. Uh, is there like so a I'm gonna lifeline? Read, yes. like <laughs> calling lifelines? <laughs> nope. A lifeline is a guess. You know, there's no. You don't get penalized for any wrong answer. Obviously, if you get um, the question right, you get uh, a point. If there is a tie, uh, the, this, uh, the decider is who gets the most difficult questions correct, either the, 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 the sixth or the fifth in the sixth categories of questions, which 
I hope are you know harder than the first ones, which I hope are easier. And um, so I'm going to read off each question and the four possible answer, answers twice. Then afterwards, I say, please show me your answers. And everybody holds up their cards. And then I just uh, confirm your answers and record them, record the correct ones. OK. So under geography, the very first question, where were the pillars of Hercules? A, on opposite banks of the Hellespont. B, on opposite banks of the Straits of Messina. C, on opposite banks of the Strait of Gibraltar. Or D, on opposite banks of the Strait of Dover. Once again, where were the pillars of Hercules? A, on opposite banks of the Hellespont. B, on opposite banks of the Strait of Messina. C, on opposite banks of the Strait of Gibraltar or D, on opposite banks of the Strait of Dover? Please show me your answers. That's an easy question okay, because I, I felt it was not easy. <laughs> yeah, Inginaris has an A. The answer is C, opposite banks of the Strait of Gibraltar. So in Solanus <laughs> and, um, and Lentulus both have one point. Well done. I just let you know, <laughs> the uh, the Hellespont is in uh, actually in modern day Turkey near Troy, or the um, the uh -huh. Anzac Cove is is also very close to the Hellespont. The the only one I was familiar with by name, really, um, although I've heard of Dover and I've I technically have heard of Gibraltar, but uh, I've I've visited uh, some parts of Turkey, so uh, I just went with sort of what I knew, but obviously wrong <laughs> in this particular case. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to the next question. Okay, Cartago Nova, conquered by Scipio Africanus, is in which modern day country? A, Spain, B, France, C, Morocco, or D, Libya? Once again, Cartago Nova, conquered by Scipio Africanus, is in which modern day country? A, Spain, B, France, C, Morocco, D, Libya. Please show me your answers. <laughs> Lentulus and Insulanus both got it correct. The answer is A, Spain. Yeah, I, I was also confusing it with uh, other locations. Uh. <laughs> perfectly fine, perfectly fine. There's plenty of time to catch no, up. You know. <laughs> I, I'm, to be honest, I'm not that strong in geography too. However, I thought that, you know, maybe the three of you will know a lot about, you know, DDs or the Roman army. So geography is just the quest, you know, a category to shake it up a little bit. Okay, so as the points stand now, Insulus, Insulanus has two and Lentulus has two points. Okay, the third question. What was the capital of Syria under the Emperor Hadrian? A, Palmyra, B, Tyre, C, Heropolis, or D, Antioch? Once again, what was the capital of Syria under the Emperor Hadrian? Was it A, Palmyra, B, Tyre, C, Hierapolis, or D, Antioch? Let me see your answers, please. Both Insulanus and Lentulus have it correct. The answer is D, Antioch. In you notice there's plenty of time, plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I won't make up ground on these two, I reckon. <laughs> it's all fun and education here. Okay. Very. Yep. So the question number four, in which city is, was, sorry, was, past tense, you could still see some parts of it now, the sanctuary of the three Gauls. So uh, 
very important point. Um, sanctuary in history. Not exactly the, the borders of where three Gauls met, but it was the ceremonial place where they met. Okay. In which city was a sanctuary of the three Gauls? A, Aralate, B, Lugdunum, C, Parisi, or D, Avaricum? Uh, a little hint. It was a very big city, too. In which city was the sanctuary of the three Gauls? A, Aralate, B, Lugdunum, C, Parisi, or D, Avaricum? Please let me see your answers. In this case, only Lentulus has it correct. It was Lugdunum. It was actually where the Emperor Claudius was born. It was a very big and important city uh, in that part of France. Hmm. So now Lentulus has four, Intellus has three, and Inginarius uh, is going to come come back in the next category. <laughs> Thank you for your motivating words. <laughs> okay. So question number five. Under Trajan, in which province was the town Byzantion, which later became Constantinople? Was it A, Thrace? Lenslis knows because he's just laughing. B, Asia Minor? C, Bithynia at Pontus, or D, Macedonia. Once again, under Trajan, and it wasn't just under Trajan, but I just like to use it as a historical reference. In which province was Byzantion, which later became Constantinople? A, Thrace, B, Asia Minor, C, Bithynia at Pontus, or D, Macedonia? Please let me see your answers. The answer is A. All three of you get one point. I, I got my knowledge from Crusader Kings 2, the uh, Paradox game. <laughs> <laughs> to be, to no be honest, I would have had a guess learned. between... <laughs> to be honest, I would have had a guess between Thrace, Thrace and Bid, Bidnia at Pontus because they're both on um, either side of the Bosphorus. Um, obviously, Byzantium was on one side and not like Instantinople, uh, uh, Istanbul, sorry, which is on both sides today. So the last question in geography. Uh, so it's, it, it should be the hardest, we'll see. Uh, which river <laughs> is not on the same continent as the other three? Okay. Is it A? Meander, B, Sabrina, C, Orontes, or D, Tigris. Once again, which river is not on the same continent as the other three? A, Meander, B, Sabrina, C, Orontes, or D, Tigris. Please let me see your answers. Everybody has it incorrect, which is perfectly fine. The answer is B, Sabrina. That is the river Severn in, in the UK. It's the longest river in the UK. The meander is in Turkey. Orontes is in several countries, including it went through Antioch and Syria. And Tigris is uh, now partially in Iraq. So three in Asia, one in Europe. Right. Now we are, that's fine. So just to um, let you know how things stand, Enplus has uh, five points, Insulus has four points, and Enginaris has one point. So now hey. we are on to a uh, question. <laughs> so the second uh, category, it's on Cicero. Um, and the first question, hopefully it's an easy one, but obviously everything's subjective here. 
To which gens did the famous Cicero belong? A. Iulia, B. Domitia, C. Tulia, or D. Appia? Once again, to which gens did the famous Cicero belong? A. Iulia, B. Domitia, C. Tulia, or D. Appia? Please let me see your answers. <laughs> yeah. C. Everybody got it correctly. Great. <laughs> so now, um, Ingenarius, two points. Insulanus, five points. Lentulus, six points. Okay. The second question Where was Cicero born? A. Rome, B, Arpinum, C, Athens, or D, Mediolanum? Once again, where was Cicero born? A, Rome, B, Arpinum, C, Athens, or D, Mediolanum? Please let me see your answers. Everybody got it correct, B, Arpino. So Ingenaris at three, Insulanus at six. And I've, beat my, uh, personal best for, I've beat my personal best for points now in a category. Yay. <laughs> but, but, but that's the fun of it. You know, some people are stronger in some categories. Some people aren't in others. <laughs> so the third question on Cicero. Okay. The Philippics that Cicero wrote were aimed at which contemporary politician? A, Mark Antony, B, Cato the Younger, C, Pompey the Great, or D, Julius Caesar? Once again, the Philippics that Caesar wrote were aimed at which contemporary politician? A, Mark Antony, B, Cato the Younger, C, Pompey the Great, or D, Julius Caesar? Please let me see your answers. Lentulus and Intellanus got it correctly. It is A, Mark Antony. <clears throat> now, so Inginaris at three, Intellanus at seven, and Lentulus at eight. So question four. Question four on Cicero. Cicero wrote many letters to his good friend, which have been preserved and are, wit and are witnesses to countless events. By which name is that friend commonly referred? Is it A, Verus? B, Atticus, C, Roscius, or D, Balbus. Once again, Cicero wrote many letters to his good friend, which have been preserved and are witnesses to countless events. By which name is that friend commonly referred? Is it A, Verus, B, Atticus, C, Roscius, or D, Balbus? Please let me see your answers. Lentulus and Ingenarius have it correct. The answer is B, Atticus. What is the correct direction? The first one. The first way you had it was correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you had it right the first way. Yeah. It's mirrored, I think. We, we see our mirrored images, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so Ingenarius is now at four. Insulanus is at seven. And Lentulus is at... Nine. Okay. The fifth question on Cicero. Which book of Cicero starts off with the following sentence as translated into English by Oxford World Classics? There are many issues in philosophy which to this day 
have by no means been adequately resolved. Was it A, de natura de oro, B, or sorry, B, de oratore, C, de re republico, republica, or D, de divinatione? Pardon me if my Latin pronunciation is a bit off. Once again, which book of Cicero starts off with the following sentence as translated into English by Oxford World Classics? There are many issues in philosophy which to this day have by no means been adequately resolved. Is it A, de natura de oro, B, or sorry, B, De oratore, C, de re republica, or D, de divinatione. Please let me see your answers. Everybody got it correct. The answer is A. Honestly, I was just guessing. Ingi Marius, <laughs> do you know that one? Uh, I've got a few of uh, Cicero's books, but I was skipping between two. <laughs> so, Mendelis, did you have to guess on that one? Uh, I, I, I guessed A. What was the question? Sorry. But, but did you know the answer? Did you know the answer or did you no, have to no, guess? No, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure about that. I wasn't sure because I didn't read them in English, so it, did, it didn't ring. It, it wouldn't have been fair if I read a passage in Latin. Um, Insulatus, <laughs> did you know that one, or did you have to guess that as as well? Uh, it was sort of uh, odding the man out, you know. But the, the last bit of it oh. was guessing. So Inginarius is now at five points. Insulanus is at eight points. And Lentulus has ten points. Okay, hey. so now the last question, yep. But I mean, we're on the last question is Cicero. Of which province was Cicero a governor as proconsul? Was it A, Sicilia? Was it B, Galatia? Was it C, Creta et Kyreniaca? I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Or D, Calicia. Once, you, once again, of which province was Cicero a governor as proconsul? Was it A, Sicilia, B, Galatia, C, Creta et Kyrenaica, or D, Calicia? Sorry, I'm not good at pronouncing. Please, uh, Show me your answers. On this one, Lentulus has it correct. It is D. Kilikia. It is a very hard question. And I probably, I would have had probably a one third shot myself. I would have had uh, Macedonia, if I recall correctly, but he uh, had a switch with his consular uh, colleague. Uh. Cicero was awarded a triumph uh, for his activities there. And, uh, and there is a whole bunch of collection of letters that he wrote to the Senate from there and, and uh, describing his campaign, his victory. His... So if someone deals with classics and, and the Latin studies, it probably that person is in advantage to know that. Mm. Okay, so now let's go to the third category. It is called structures in Rome. So they could be buildings, but not only buildings, but structures. The first question, although rebuilt by the Emperor Hadrian, which building was originally commissioned by Marcus Agrippa and still to this day bears his name in the inscription on the front of the building? Is it A, the Colosseum, 
B, the Pantheon, C, the Domus Aurea, or D, the Temple of Venus in Rome. Once again, although rebuilt by the Emperor Hadrian, which building, obviously in Rome, was originally commissioned by Marcus Agrippa and still to this very day bears his name in the inscription on the front? Is it A, the Colosseum, B, the Pantheon, C, the Domus Aurea, or D, the Temple of Venus in Rome? Please let me know answers. The answer is uh, B, the Pantheon. So Inginarius and Lentulus both have this one correct. Um, it's actually a tricky one. Hadrian built the Temple of uh, Venus in Rome, but um, you don't see that inscription today. So let me just add up these points so far. So Inginarius has question. six points. What was that? It is overall a tricky question. Marcus Agrippa built many, many buildings mm. during this time. That's true. Although um, his name on on the front of the building in a large inscription is uh, pretty iconic. So Ignarius has six points. Insulanus has eight points, and Lentulus has. 12 points. Okay, the next question regarding structures in Rome. Three of these large bathhouses can be visited today, although one does not exist. Which is not a bathhouse in Rome? Is it A, the Baths of Caracalla? B, the Baths of Trajan? C, the Baths of Diocletian, or D, the Baths of Nerva. Once again, three of these large bathhouses can be visited today, although one does not exist. Which is not a bathhouse in Rome? A, the Baths of Caracalla, B, the Baths of Trajan, C, the Baths of Diocletian, or D, the Baths of Nerva? Please let me see your answers. Ingenarius and Lentulus both have it correct. It is D, the Baths of Nerva. Yeah. So the, the Baths of Nerva doesn't exist. He was, he was only an emperor a short amount of time. So now Inginarius has three, four, five, has seven, and Lentulus has thirteen. Okay. So the third question about structures in Rome. Saint Peter's Basilica was built over which older Roman structure? Was it A, the Circus of Nero, B, the Stadium of Domitian, C, the Circus Flaminius, or the D, Porticus Octaviae? Once again, St. Peter's Basilica was built over which older Roman structure? A, the Circus of Nero, B, the Stadium of Domitian, C, the Circus Flaminius, or D, the Porticus Octaviae? Please let me see your answer. In this question, in this one is A, Circus of Nero, Lentulus got it right. Um, so basically, uh, St. Peter was buried right outside the circus in a cemetery, and St. Peter's was built later on top of that. <clears throat> so, Restructures and uh, arch so architecture is not, uh, not my topic. 
That's perfectly fine. We have we have so many different categories. So I'm sure there will be a few more categories. That Mentalist now has a 14. Okay. So question number four, structures in Rome. Years ago, Nova Roma initiated the Magna Mater project to restore the Temple of Magna Mater in some manner. On which hill are the remains of that temple? A, the Capitoline, B, the Palatine, C, the Esquiline, or D, the Avitine? Once again, years ago, Nova Roma initiated the Magna Mater project to restore the Temple of Magna Mater in some manner. On which hill are the remains of that temple? Is it A, the Capitoline, B, the Palatine, C, the Esquiline, or D, the Aventine? Please let me see your answers. Everybody has it incorrect. The answer is B, the Palatine Hill. But I, right. I thought A was the Palatine. So I, I no misunderstood. Between the two. <laughs> okay, the next question regarding structures in Rome. Question number five. And this is quite a difficult one. I had to think long and hard to make it a fun question. Okay. If, if you stood as a speaker on the front part of the rostra in the forum, with your body in the direction of the Colosseum, giving a speech, let's say in the second century AD, and you turn your head to the right at an exactly 90 degree angle, which building would you be looking at directly? A, the Curia. You are on the rostra. The B, the... You are on the rostra at the front part of the rostra giving a speech to a crowd yeah. in front of you. And your body is facing the Colosseum. Okay. Okay. So, so the answer is A, Curia, B, Basilica Emilia, C, Temple of Saturn, or D, the Basilica Iulia. It's a very hard question. I wanted to do a fun one, though. If you stood as a speaker on the front part of the rostra in the forum, with your body in the direction of the Colosseum, giving a speech in the early 2nd century AD, and you turned your head to the right at a, exactly a 90-degree angle, which building would you be looking at directly? A, the Curia, B, the Basilica Amelia, C, the Temple of Saturn, or D, the Basilica Iulia? Please let me see your answers. In this, it is D, Basilica Iulius, Iulia, so only Insulanus got it correctly. Now, it is, it is a very hard question. I would have easily had to guess because all four buildings I mentioned are in the vicinity of the Rostra, but only one was a uh, correct answer. Now, Insulanus, he got that point correctly, and now he is at nine points. Okay, the very last question regarding structures in Rome, and it is a hard question before we go to another category that probably the three of you would find much easier. So the last question, structures in Rome. If you were standing in the tabularium, the building that housed the archives of the Roman state, and you wanted to go for a walk, which structure of these four would be the furthest away as the crow flies? Is it A, the Mamertine prison, B, the Ark of Janus, C, the theater of Mar Marcellus, 
or D, the Forum of Augustus. Once again, if you were standing in the tabularium, the building that housed the archives of the Roman state and wanted to go for a walk, which structure of these four would be the furthest away as the crow flies? A, the Mamertine prison, B, the art of uh, Janus, C, the theater of Marcellus, or D, the forum of Augustus? Please let me see your answers. The answer is Ark of Janus. Actually, every person got it incorrect, but it's a super hard question. Hmm. The, the closest one was the Mamertine prison. The theater of Marcellus and form of Augustus are a bit away, but not as far away as the uh, Ark of uh, Janus. Okay, now we are on the next category. So it is actually category four of six. And it is called Roman deities. Now, I believe in general, these questions are easier than, than the questions in the last um, topic. Okay, the first question. Which island is most commonly associated with Venus's birthplace? A, Cyprus, B, Sardinia, C, Crete, or D, Malta? Once again, which island is most commonly associated with Venus's birthplace? A, Cyprus, B, Sardinia, C, Crete, or D, Malta? Please let me see your answers. The answer is A, Cyprus. Lentil is this correct one. <clears throat> With that, Lentilus has 15. Okay. Question number two. Who was both Jupiter's wife and also part of the Capitoline Triad? A, Ceres, B, Minerva, C, Diana, or D, Juno. Once again, who was both Jupiter's wife and also part of the Capitoline Triad? A, Ceres, B, Minerva, C, Diana, or D, Juno. Please let me see your answers. The answer is D, Juno. Everybody got it correctly. Nice. That means Inginarius has, has eight points. Insulanus has 10 points. And Lentulus has 15 points. OK. The next question. Um, who was the main deity of the Oracle of Delphi in Roman times? Was it A, Apollo, B, Jupiter, C, Orpheus, or D, Carmenta? Once again, who was the main deity of the Oracle of Delphi in Roman times? A, Apollo, B, Jupiter, C, Orpheus, or D, Carmenta? Please let me see your answers. The answer is A, Apollo. So Insulanos and Lentulus both got it correctly. So, yep, I believe Intolana says 11. And Lentulus has 17. Yep. 
for the next question on Roman deities. Who was the Roman equivalent of the Greek deity called Hephaestus? I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly, although I, I don't know Greek. Once again, Hephaestus, H-E-P-H-A-E-S-T-U-S is how one spells it. Is it A, Saturn, B, Dies Pater, C, Vulcan, or D, Liber? Once again, who was the Roman equivalent of the Greek deity called Hephaestus? Was it A, Saturn, B, Dies Pater, C, Vulcan, or D, Liber? Please let me see your answers. The answer is C, Vulcan. So uh, Lentulus, uh, both Lentulus and Insulanus both got that correctly. Okay. Well, there's so many, there's a lot of points on the board. I could just read, read them off occasionally, maybe not after every single correct answer. Um, for, the, for the Roman deities, the fifth of the six questions, so we're getting into a little bit harder territory now. On many Roman mosaics and other depictions, where did Bacchus or Dionysus, uh, according to the Greeks, conquest take place? A, Armenia, B, Egypt, C, India, or D, Mesopotamia? Once again, on many Roman mosaics and other descriptions, uh, sorry, the depictions, where did Bacchus's or the Greek Dionysus conquest take place? A, Armenia, B, Egypt, C, India, or D, Mesopotamia? Please let me see your answers. Lentulus has it correct. It's C, India. If you see the depictions, um, normally he's riding on a chariot pulled by tigers. Okay. So now we are on the last question of this category of Roman deities. Which one of these is not a... Chthonic deity. Um, I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly. If I'm not, it's C H T H O N I C, Chthonic. So, which one of these is not a Chthonic deity? A. Prosperina, B. Hecate, C. Orcus, D. Fecunditas. Once again, which of these is not a Chthonic deity, A, Prosperina, B, Hecate, C, Orcos, or D, Fecunditas? Please let me see your answers. The answer is D, Fecunditas. So the Chthonic deities are the deities of the underworld. And Fecunditas is, I believe, the deity for childbirth while the other three were these chthonic deities. So very impressive. Uh, Lentulus got every question in that category correctly. <laughs> As we would have hoped. <laughs> but, but, you know, there's still plenty of questions to go, and I <laughs> just hope that, you know, everybody's having a great time learning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now the question, the category is military, and I had a lot of fun with this, consulting with a few books, just to make sure that uh, uh, I'm 100% correct. So, who was second in command of a century in the professional Roman army? Was it A, the Centurio, B, the Legatus? C, the Aquila firm, or D, the Optio. Once again, who was second in command 
of a century in the professional Roman army? Was it A, the centurio, B, the legatus, C, the aquilifer, or D, the optio? Please let me see your answers. The answer is D, optio. Everybody gets one point. That'll end my point dry spell. That's good. <laughs> the question number two. In which fort on Hadrian's Wall were hundreds of tablets found that gave us insight into the lives of the people stationed there? Is it A, Vindolanda, B, Deva, C, Arbea, or D, Contra Aquincum? Once again, in which fort on Hadrian's Wall were hundreds of tablets found that gave us insight into the lives of the people stationed there? Was it A, Vindolanda, B, Deva, C, Arbea, or D, Contra Aquincum? Please let me see your answers. The answer is A, Vindolanda. So Inginarius and Lentulus both have it correctly. So one can see them there and also at the British Museum, they have a fine collection of these uh, tablets written in hand. And, it, and one of them even has apparently the oldest handwriting of a woman in Britain were among these uh, tablets down there. Okay. Inginarius, let me just count up your points now, Thief. So Inginar is now at uh, 10 points. So you're slowly, slowly oh. getting there. <laughs> okay. So question number three in, about Roman military. What is the name of a short military dagger? So obviously short is relative. So we're looking for the shortest, but definitely a dagger. A, Gladius, B, Pugio, C, Spatha, or D, Dolabra. Once again, what is the name of a short military dagger? A, Gladius, B, Pugio, C, Spatha, or D, Dolabra. Let me please see your answers. The answer is B, Pugio. Everybody got it correctly. Nice. I have a feeling that military is definitely the strong suit of the, of the people here. <laughs> or I hope so. We'll see. Okay. The question number four. What building would typically be in or next to the center of a legionary fortress? Was it A, the Principia, B, cohort barracks, C, the hospital, or D, the granary? Once again, which building would typically be in or next to the center of a legionary fortress? A, the Principia, B, the cohort barracks, C, the hospital, or D, the granary? Please let me see your answers. The answer is A, the Principia. Everybody got it correctly. Cool. So, a little more difficult now because it's military, but also military history. Question number five. Which decisive tactic did the Romans use to eliminate their enemy in Masada? 
and Masada now is currently in uh, Israel. Was it A, ambush, B, long range artillery, C, siege ramp, or D, tunneling? Once again, which decisive so what is tactic C? did the Romans use? What? What is C? What was that? I didn't understand. What is the answer C? Siege ramp. I didn't recognize this word. Siege ramp. Let, let me just let me just read the let me just read the questions um, and the answers once again. Which decisive tactic did the Romans use to eliminate their enemy in Masada, which is in modern day Israel? Was it A ambush? B long range artillery? C a siege ramp? Or D Tunneling. Please let me see your answers. The answer is correct. C. It's a siege ramp. And it's a very impressive uh, piece of engineering to see to um, for troops that surrounded this mountain to get up to the top of it. So everybody got that point. So Lentless, you did not, was it the siege or the ramp or or you just didn't quite uh, understand? I uh, didn't understand as you pronounced it because uh, sometimes oh, okay. uh, I uh, know a word in written form, but uh, if I, I didn't talk ab about this with someone, I don't, no, I don't know in my head the correct English pronunciation. So it, it I didn't recognize it as any sure. English word. That's fine. Um, so actually the military, um, so both um, Inginarius and Lentulus so far have five of the maximum of five and Insulanus has four of the maximum of five. So this has gone out quite well. Now we're on the very last question of military. And that is, what was a turma, spelled T-U-R-M-A? Was it, a, so A, a row of warships, B, a formation of 10 maniples, C, squadron operating ballistae or scorpions on the battlefield, or D, a cavalry unit. Once again, what was a torma spelled T-U-R-M-A? Was it A, a row of warships? B, a formation of 10 maniples? C, a squadron operating ballistae or scorpions on the battlefield? Or D, a cavalry unit? Please let me see your answers. The answer is D, a cavalry unit. Both Insulanus and Lentulus got that correctly. So. I'm not a cavalry guy, clearly. <laughs> you are an equestrian, Amika. <laughs> <laughs> study, study, got to do some study uh, then, clearly. <laughs> I, I would believe it was in 2017 um, to celebrate, I think it was, yeah. Uh, a certain milestone of Hadrian's Wall, they actually had a Torma um, congregate and perform, and it was the first Torma, so Roman Torma, um, on display since antiquity, and that was in 2017. And unfortunately, I couldn't make it, okay. but when I saw publicity about the Torma, I decided to go to the wall for other uh, celebrations that year. So before we get to the last um, category, let me just add up all the points now, because now is a good time. So let's see with Inginarius. One, two, three. So Inginarius has 13 points so far. Intulanus. So Inginarius has 16 points. And let me just add up Lentulus's. Okay. 
Lenzo says 26. And there's actually uh, three of the five categories Lentilus has gotten full points. So that's quite an achievement. Um, with that being said, let's go to the very last category. And it's called important events. Okay. The first question. Who was the first person to cross Rome's boundary without permission, according to, le to legend, paying for that mistake with his life? Was it A, Anis, B, Tarquinius Superbus, C, an unknown Gallic warrior, or D, Remus? Once again, who is the first person to cross Rome's boundary without permission? according to legend, paying for the mistake with his life. A, Aeneas, B, Tarquinius Superbus, C, an unknown Gallic warrior, or D, Remus? Please let me see your answers. The answer is D, Remus. Both Insulanus and Lentulus got that correctly. And Remus was the brother of Romulus. So the next question, when the so-called first triumvirate was announced, who was not a part of it? A, Julius Caesar, B, Pompey, C, Lepidus, or D, Crassus. Once again, when the so-called first tri triumvirate was announced, who was not a part of it? Was it A, Julius Caesar, B, Pompey, C, Lepidus, or D, Crassus? Please let me see your answers. The answer is C, Lepidus, both Lentulus uh, and Insulanus has it correct. <clears throat> so Lepidus was actually part of the second triumvirate. The other ones were part of the first triumvirate. Okay. So now we're jumping back into a little bit of military history. So it's a third, so it's getting a little bit tougher. In which Punic War was Hannibal defeated <laughs> during the Battle of Zama? Was it the first, the first Punic War, the Second Punic War, the Third Punic War, or the Fourth Punic War? Once again, in which Punic War was Hannibal defeated during the Battle of Zama? A, the First Punic War, B, the Second Punic War, C, the Third Punic War, or D, the Fourth Punic War? Please let me see your answers. The answer is uh, B, the Second Punic War. Both uh, Lentulus and Insulanus got it correct. Um, there was only three Punic Wars. The third one ended with the complete destruction, or the conquest of Carthage and the destruction of the city. But Hannibal was defeated um, in the Second Punic War. So both Insulanos and Lentulus have that point. Okay. So now question number four. Under important events. Which emperor inaugurated the Colosseum, also known as the Amphitheatrum Flavium, with a huge amount of gladiatorial combats and animal fights? Was it A, Trajan, B, Vespasian, C, Titus, or D, Domitian? Once again, 
who inaugurated the Colosseum, also known as the Amphitheatrum Flavium, with a huge amount of gladiatorial combats and animal fights? Was it A, Trajan, B, Vespasian, C, Titus, or D, Christian? Please let me see your answers. The answer is C, Titus uh, Lentulus got that one correctly. Um, Vespasian started the Colosseum, but uh, so with the booty from the war um, against the Jews, but Titus actually was the one that inaugurated it and minted coins. Okay. But there's only two questions left. So um, they are a bit difficult, but also fun. So the second to last question, where was Constantine the Great originally proclaimed emperor? And if you visit the place now, you'll see a big statue of him in front of a large church. Was it A, Eboracum, B, Alexandria, C, the Milvian Bridge, or D, Sirmium. Once again, where was Constantine the Great originally proclaimed emperor? And if one goes there today, one sees a big statue of him in front of a very large church. Was it A, Eboracum, B, Alexandria, C, Milvian Bridge, or D, Sirmium? Please let me see your answers. Uh, unfortunately, everybody got it incorrectly. It is A, a border home, which is York. <laughs> now, many of the late emperors came from, yeah, many of the emperors came from what is modern day Serbia. So, Sirmium was kind of the, like the, the spoiler there. But uh, he was definitely proclaimed <laughs> emperor originally in York. And if you go to the York Minster, you can see a very large statue of him. Mm. Okay. So, so the very last question of important events, and we're going back to the Roman Republic here. And for this question, I would have to guess. Like I said, I'm. Um, it's it's a difficult question, but maybe. You could use 50-50, and uh, a few people could get it correctly. So the last question. What was one of the main results of the social war from roughly 90 to 88 BC? A, many new citizens were added to the census rolls. B, Rome acquired Cisalpine Gaul. C, many slaves in Sicily were executed or D, land reforms, redistributions, and reliefs from rents. Now, I do have to say all of these were actual events, but we are only referring to one question here. What was one of the main results of the social war from 90 to 88 BC, approximately? A, many new citizens were added to the census rolls, B, Rome acquired Cisalpine Gaul. C, many slaves in Sicily were executed. Or D, Lenin reforms, redistributions, and reliefs from rents. Please let me see your answers. The answer is A, many new citizens were added to the census rolls. Both Lentulus and Insulanus got that correct. Okay. Um, so, Intelamas, did you know that one or did you have to guess? I knew that one, one very well. Since social wars were all about the uh, Sotsi or Soki not being happy with uh, their citizenship status, basically. Exactly. And Lentilus, were you able to um, 
get the correct answer off the top of your head or did you have to guess that? That that is from the top of my head. I was guessing with Constantine and right. wrongly, but this, uh, this I know. Okay. Unfortunately, um, Ingenarius did not get any points that round. But he did very well. Um, I do have to say congratulations. Uh, <laughs> no, he Ingenarius. didn't. <laughs> he had 14 points. <laughs> Oh, unlucky 13. Very good. In in second place. But but you still did very well. I mean, there were very, many hard questions. Um, but the military ones. You, you, you well. overly flattered me. Thank you. <laughs> so in second place, Insulanus had uh, 20 points. Did very well. And, uh, and there's a bunch of questions that I would have had to have guessed and in first place uh, is Lentulus, who got 31 points. And on this day, for this very first competition, he is declared the victor. And uh, the victor, I didn't mention at the beginning, receives a three-month YouTube subscription, which means that for three months, uh, he could watch videos on YouTube, such as this one, or other uh, YouTube videos that we posted on the Nova Roman channel, um, ad-free. And also, uh, they have YouTube music, which he could also listen to for three months. And also, he gets sex uh, points. Um, so he would get three census points. Um, Insulanus would get two census points. Ingenaris would get one census point. And um, so, I just really hope that all three of you enjoyed the uh, quiz show, the very first one. Um, and hopefully you also learned a lot and it was fun and entertaining also for the audience. And if people at home enjoyed it, then maybe I could do another one of these in the future, although it does take a lot of preparation. So uh, let me know in the comments or send me an email uh, if you enjoyed it at home and would like me to do this again. So anyways, let's just go around the room and just say a few final thoughts. Thank you very much for uh, organizing this. That uh, must have been quite a work and, um, and for, for inviting us. I didn't want to participate originally, but uh, I enjoyed it. And, uh, and uh, I will listen to a lot of uh, Nicki Minaj on YouTube. <laughs> no, I will use it to to watch Roman themed videos. Great. I hope you enjoyed it. And, and thank you so much for um, joining. Um, I know that originally you were only held in a reserve, but your presence actually led to us being able to um, do the quiz show today. So I'm very grateful. Um, Ingenarius, do you have a few final words? Uh, hey, look, uh, thank you for very much uh, for, for hosting uh, what is a, a new format uh, uh, for us relatively in, in, in uh, Nova Roma. So it's uh, great to see, and I think this is a great way of learning as well, both participating but also those watching in the future. Uh, and look, I've certainly uh, learned a lot, uh, which is uh, which is fantastic. So uh, yeah, uh, gracias to be uh, to you, and uh, I look forward to seeing more of these in the future. Definitely. And Insulanus, um, do you have a few final words? Absolutely. Gracias, Tibi, for the uh, for the fun quiz and absolutely education a quiz as well. And it absolutely was fun and uh, exciting to be here. And definitely a good test of my, uh, my own knowledge with some of the harder questions. And io concordia, io ludi novi well, thank, man. thank you all. <laughs> yes. So once again, this is um, this quiz show is part of the uh, current uh, Ludi no, uh, Novi Romani that are going on until March the 15th. And I hope everybody has a great Ludi and a great rest of the day. <laughs>